Hello. Um, today we will continue our English classes and uh, we are going to focus a little bit on the FCE exam, um, the first English certificate exam. And we are going to tackle the use of English section. So if you like the lesson, uh, please share it and enjoy. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so uh, today's lesson will focus a little bit on the third part of the use of English section of this exam. Um, first of all, you can use this um, certificate for um, a B2 level of language. Uh, and in the case of teenagers, you can use it um, uh, once you um, finish high school, you know, you can have that uh, a certificate. And um, it's also um, extremely useful to test your knowledge and uh, your skills in English, obviously, because it's a very complex exam. Okay, so let's focus on the third part. So in this part, you will be given a text uh, which will have a number of gaps. And you will be given here on the right side a number of words, and you will have to change those words uh, to fit the specific gap. So you will have to change them either into a noun or into an adjective, maybe into a verb. So it depends on the context. So um, it's a more, um, this kind of exercise um, sort of focuses on your skills of uh, your language skills, right? Because you need to be able to juggle between the um, between the words, and uh, if you are given only one word, you need to be able to um, really know how you can um, change that word, right? All right. Um, so let's see. Um, First of all, what I would recommend always is to read the entirety of the text um, without, you know, <laughs> focusing on the gaps. So leave the gaps aside for now. What I would suggest is for you to read the entire text and then you will get um, a feeling of what is about, of the main idea. And uh, maybe as you, even as you read it, you will um, come up with a possible answer for this gap. Um, it might come instinctually which is always a great thing and it's always the case. But then the second time you go through the text, you need to also check that uh, first instinct and put some logic into it, right? And see if it fits the context or not. Because keep in mind that you can also add prefixes or suffixes to these words. And especially when it comes to prefixes, uh, they can be they can have either a positive meaning or a negative one. So you should also keep that in mind when choosing the, the word uh, to fill in the gap. Okay, so we have a text about games in space. For astronauts, along missions into space, and we have here the example, bore becomes boredom. So boredom can be a real problem. In order to help the astronauts and doctors need to find out what this feels like. As part of the program, six volunteers will be locked away for 520 days to see what effect this has on their mind and body. During their time in, the volunteers will be able to communicate with their controllers, but only in a way that replicates the astronauts' experience. For example, the further away from the Earth, uh, from Earth they get, the longer the delay in the signal. So they will be to have a conversation in real time. As part of the experiment, the volunteers will be allowed to play computer games. There will be a of solo games and competitive games available. Afterwards, they will be asked to give on how hard they found the games to play and what their state was at the time. As a result of the gathered, it may be possible to create special software for crews or on future missions. So you can kind of see as you read it the first time that uh, the level of the text is not very much advanced. So you, you may not even have any unknown words here, which is a great thing, right? So, but what you need to focus on is the uh, the syntax, right? And the grammar and to be able to figure out based on some clues that you are given, what kind of part of speech you need to fill in the gap with. So we are going to do just that. So since the first one was already the example, we're going to skip the first sentence. So in order to help the astronauts and doctors need to find out what this feels like. So I've underlined here for you the words astronauts and doctors. 
Why? Because this is an enumeration, right? And since we already have here astronauts and doctors, what this signals us is that we need to fill in the gap with a profession in the plural form. So we have here the word science, which needs to, which needs to become scientists, right? And in that way, it can fit the, the gap perfectly from a grammatical point of view as well. All right. And then we have, as part of the program, six volunteers will be locked away. Okay, so we have here the word search. If we look at what we have before the gap and after the gap, we see that we have here the definite article, right? And we have here the noun program. So what this will be once we fill in the gap, it will become a noun phrase. So if you don't know what noun phrases are, they are quite simple and quite common and you already know them, just not by this name. Um, obviously, a noun phrase centers around a noun. So that is the center of it. And the that said noun can have different determiners around it that um, add meaning to it. For example, the beautiful house is a noun phrase, right? The center of this noun phrase is house which is in turn determined by the, the adjective beautiful, which describes it, and the definite article the, which also adds a little bit of piece of information. It can also be uh, determined by other parts of speech, such as uh, pronouns, for instance, so we can say my beautiful house. It can have more than one adjective, so we can say my, my big beautiful house. So what I mean by that is that all of these are noun phrases, and we can use that piece of knowledge and apply it here because we have the components of the noun phrase. So we have the definite article and we also have the noun, which means that in this gap we cannot use a noun. We have to use an adjective that would determine this noun. So some of you might be misled by this definite article uh, that is before the gap, and you might think that you might need a, a noun here, but that's not the case since we already have one. So we need to put in here the word, what word can we form from search? Research. So research can be, uh, this is the adjective, right? And it, it, it also has the same spelling and the same pronunciation as the noun research. But in this case, it determines the word program, the noun, so it becomes, uh, it is an adjective. Okay, uh, all right. So during their time in, the volunteers will be able to communicate with their controllers. And we have here the word isolate. So here you might think, um, I, I guess that the two options you might come up with might be isolating and isolation. And one thing to keep in mind about this kind of exercise is that uh, what is always preferable is for you to go not with the gerund form, right? Isolating, but go with the proper noun instead. So isolation. And either way, the word isolating would not really make much sense in this context. So, yeah, but <laughs> just in case you might, uh, you might have thought that that could also be a possibility. Okay, let's move on to number 20. For example, the further away from Earth they get, the longer the delay in signal. So they will be something to have a conversation in real time. So I've highlighted here for you the word delay. And if we take a look at the word that we have to change, we have the word able, right? Able is uh, one of the most uh, versatile um, words because we can form many different words from it. We can say ability, uh, able, unable, disability. So it, de it really depends on the context, right? So in this case, since we have the word delay, this signals us that we need to have here a negative meaning, right? Because a real-time conversation wouldn't have been possible. So we need to put a negative prefix to the word that we are going to uh, put in the gap. So it becomes unable. They will be unable to have a conversation in real time. Okay, moving on to uh, 21, there will be a uh, of solo games and competitive games available. And here we have the word mix. One thing to keep in mind is that 
um, this is the case in general, right? So the list of words that we are given on the right side cannot, under any circumstances, remain the same. So we cannot put the word mix here. We need to change it, right? And either way, if we think of the word mix, uh, it means basically to combine two different things, right? But here we don't have two different things specified. It's solo games, competitive games. We don't know how many they are, right? And if we are, when we are talking about multiple things, combining multiple things, we have the word mixture, which is um, more specific for this case and is also the correct one because we couldn't have put mix here anyway. All right, moving on to the next one, to 22. Afterwards, they will be asked to give on how hard they found the games to play. Okay, so I've uh, underlined here for you to give. Why? So we have the word feed here, right? Um, and here, before the gap, we don't have any definite or indefinite articles. And this suggests two things. First of all, that we uh, can either have a plural noun or an uncountable noun, because we know that before uncountable nouns, we uh, cannot put at least the uh, indefinite article, right? So let's see, how can we change the word feed into becoming an uncountable noun, right? It can become feedback, which as it happens is an uncountable noun. We, and it doesn't require anything before it to give feedback on how hard they found the games to play and what their state was at the time. And we have here the word emotion. Um, and again, here we have a, a noun phrase, their something state, because we have a noun here, then it means that we need an adjective before it to determine it. And in this case, it will be emotional. This one is uh, very straightforward. Just make sure that with all of the words uh, you're uh, filling the, gap with, the gaps with, you are using the correct spelling because otherwise you will uh, lose points. Okay, and uh, as for the last one, um, we have here again, the definite article before the gap, but then uh, after the gap, we have gathered, which is a verb which means that in this case, we no longer have a noun phrase, right? And what, it, what this means is that before, since before the gap, we have the, uh, the definite article, the, then we need here a noun. And we have the word inform, which easily becomes information. Okay, as a result of the information gathered. All right, this, uh, the last two were <laughs> very straightforward, right? So in general, this kind of exercise will not pose um, difficulty if you are being very careful and if you um, pay attention to the clues that you are given because you will be given some clues. And if you analyze the text and at the same time, the meaning of the text, because that's also very important to decide whether you need a positive meaning or a negative one, so in order to, if you do that, and if you pay attention, then this exercise will not pose such difficulty. Uh, this is more about testing your uh, knowledge of grammar combined with content, right? So you need to be able to figure out the meaning as well as uh, how everything functions inside of the sentences. Okay, so that was uh, today's lesson. I hope that you found it useful and that you learned uh, something new. And I really hope that I will see you soon um, in our classes. Uh, please join us if you if you liked uh, today's lesson and I'll be looking forward to see you, seeing you again sometime in the future. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.